Hey guys, this is just a supplementary video about one of my videos that you can find on YouTube about free trade diagram. Uh, that, uh, you know, here we focus a little more on when a country is an exporting country instead of an importing country. Okay, all right. So as you can see from the diagram on the left, that is basically telling you the allocation of resources when it is in the domestic situation only, which means that there is no trade with the other countries. Okay, all right, so you can see that is how big the CS and how big the PS is in this situation. But when we come to an idea where we are opening the door to the world, and so now we're trading with other countries, you will find something a bit different in this case. Okay, so let's take a look of the diagram on the right. Okay, on the right here, we are able to see that our domestic price, or you could say our market price, when we are making this certain good here, is basically P1. Oops, sorry about this. It's basically P1. All right, and uh, we can also find that in our world, all right, when other countries they are making the same good, they have to sell their good at the price of PW. And obviously, PW is bigger than P1. And so, which means that we are basically having an advantage when we make this kind of good. Because, you know, we are way more, you know, cost uh, competitive compared to other countries in this world. And so, which makes us the exporting country in this case. And when, you, when we think about it like this, then we are able to come up with an idea. So if we have such advantage, how do we become as rational as possible so that we can maximize our profit or maximize our gain? Okay, all right. So think about it like this. What if we try to sell our goods instead of setting a price at P1, now we just set our price at PW. Let's see what will happen. Okay, all right. If we are setting our price at PW, so you could see that based on law of demand, we would definitely see a lower quantity demanded, uh, which is Q2 here, right? You know, that's a, um, you know, a lower QD, right? Okay. And at the same time, because of, you know, a higher price uh, based on law of supply, we will see that there should be a higher QS, okay, which is um, Q3 in this case. And domestically, when we talk about this kind of concept, we would say here, the range between Q3 and Q2, well, which is basically a surplus that we can find. And we all know that having a surplus, it may not be, you know, the most efficient case in economics. And therefore, why should we still do that? Right? So, but now the thing here is we are not just dealing with the domestic situation. The thing here is we are also opening our trade to the world. So, if we are being so competitive and the world is basically accepting a higher price, which is PW, so what we can do with the surplus then? We, yes, there you go. We can just simply sell our surplus to other countries. And so the surplus here will turn into basically how much we are going to export to other countries. Okay, so now we are basically better off by setting a higher price. Okay, all right. So, you know, even though we may have to sacrifice, um, you know, our own consumers a little bit, our domestic consumers a little bit. So let's take a look of how, you know, the CS, the consumer surplus, and the PS, the producer surplus will change because of this. Okay, all right. So I'm going to use, um, you know, the same different colors uh, to represent, you know, CS and PS. For CS, because now, when we are setting our price at a higher price, then, well, obviously, CS is going to, you know, decrease because the price is getting higher. And then consumers, they are also buying 
less goods, all right, in this case. I'm talking about the domestic consumers in this case. So, you know, CS, it will become an area uh, that I have just shaded, you know, right here. Okay, all right. And we can, you know, talk about this by saying uh, CS is actually going down compared to our domestic situation. Okay, because, you know, P is going up and then Q is also going down. So, you know, which is pretty sad for the domestic consumers here. All right, yeah, so really sad. Okay, all right. But what about, you know, the domestic producers now, right? Because now we are setting a higher price. We are setting a higher price. That's one thing. But we are also selling more goods, not only to the domestic consumers, but also, more importantly, people around the world, which is the foreign consumers. So when we are trying to draw the PS now, it's basically the PS is getting way bigger. All right. So now when you take a look of how I shade it, it's going all the way, all right, from one corner to another. So now the PS is basically this big. All right, okay. And we all know that in order to find the social surplus, we need to combine the CS and PS together. And if you have to compare, you know, let me use green color, okay? So, you know, social surplus, which is SS, is equal to CS plus PS, all right? If you compare the two situations here, obviously, all right, SS in an international situation like this will be bigger than the domestic situation. So before I write this down, I'm just going to finish what would happen to the PS as well. So PS right here, you can see comparing to the domestic situation, definitely it is increasing. And why? We can also use the change in P and Q to explain this. P is increasing. Producers, they love it. All right. And quantity in this case is also increasing from Q1 to Q3. How great is that? All right. So, you know, they, are, they will be so happy in this case. And for SS, you can also see that compared to the domestic situation, SS is also increased. OK. All right. Yeah. Just look at, you know, how big the area uh, is getting, you know, like uh, right now uh, when the country is exporting goods to other countries. So, you know, if, if I would have to tell you the extra area that, you know, SS is gaining is basically the area of, you know, this green stuff that I'm highlighting. OK, you see that? Yeah. Compared to the, you know, like uh, domestic situation. So, you know, with that being said, we could say allocative efficiency is basically increasing as well, which is really good for, you know, uh, what we mentioned about global allocation resources. So we are basically showing the merit of having international trade in this case. Okay, all right, so overall countries, they are basically enjoying a lot of benefits, you know, when it comes to efficiency. Yeah, so, um, and you can also look at um, the change in total revenue as well. The change in total revenue for the exporting country, um, you know, uh, the producers, you can see that in the domestic situation, the total revenue is basically, we all know that, is P1 times Q1, right? Okay, so that's before, before trade. But after trade, we could see that we are now setting a higher price at a higher quantity, okay? So definitely after trade, the producers, they are gaining more as well. So if you can use this logic here, then you can also find out in general, the workers in this case will be quite happy too. Because you know, when revenue of a company is increasing, then they may try to hire more workers 
or they may try to you know increase the the income of the workers so that they are more able to you know uh, motivate them for producing higher output. So that is basically uh, what we are trying to you know look at. Okay, in this um, you know case here. All right. So hopefully this video will also help you uh, how to understand the basics about you know international uh, trade and using the diagram for the analysis and evaluation. All right. So until next time.